Hello, this is a review of the Sound Blaster Recon 3D Sound Card, model SB1356. Now the card comes with one stereo beam-forming microphone, the card itself, which looks quite nice. It's a nice hefty card, but not too heavy and not too light. Um, it's got an interesting window so you can see inside. It's a PCI Express. And on the back we have three, three output ports. Uh, as well as a digital output and a digital optical input, both optical input and outputs, a microphone port and a headphone port. Overall the card looks really nice. Comes with the CD for the software and the quick install instructions. Let's compare this to the onboard audio built onto my current motherboard so we can look at any differences. So, notice that these are specifically labeled on the back of my computer. We have center, sub, rear, in, out, and microphone, as well as the digital optical out that the Sound Blaster card also had. Now, these ports are specifically labeled, where on the Sound Blaster card, there were just three general outputs of different colors, uh, which perhaps you can configure on the card. And uh, the Sound Blaster card had a specifically labeled microphone, but it also had a specifically labeled headphone jack, whereas there isn't a specifically labeled headphone jack on the card. However, there is on the board on the front of my case a headphone jack on the front for HD audio. But if we compare that to what we saw on the card, remember, uh, we didn't have an input that was of these different colors. We had a digital optical input right here, which is different than was on the computer. Now on my existing computer I had two additional ports on the front of the computer. This is my microphone port and a headphone port. So if I was looking for one specifically labeled headphones that I didn't find on the back of the computer, you know, this makes sense, right? You, if you're plugging in headphones, you're more likely to be plugging directly into the front of your computer than running around and plugging them into the back if it's not a laptop. Now these are actually connected by a cable called an HD audio cable that will run down all around the side of the computer, come around and connect into the motherboard onto the, the onboard port down here. Now if I want to be able to use those head, the headphone jack on the front of the computer on the particular card, rather than running around plugging it in directly into the back of the, the headphone port here, uh, what I'll want to do instead is you see there's an extra connector here. So basically if you look at it, see the HDA? This basically means that it's the, it's the HD audio port. So I'll be able to take that same cable and connect it onto the card right there. Um, so that I can run all of the sound through this card instead of the onboard audio. Now to install the sound card, you're going to want to find an available PCI Express socket that would match the card that you see here. And inside my computer, we see that I have two of them. Here's one PCI Express socket, and here's another PCI Express socket. So if all things are equal, well then choose one that's either more free, so I don't want to get it in the way of my uh, fan power for my rear fan, so I'm going to choose this port down here, and it also keeps it away from high heat sources like my processor if I were to mount it right below the processor. So I'm going to keep things more airy in my case. So I'm going to choose this connection and all you do is take off the, the slot for the matching uh, back panel. Okay, now I have it installed. I just removed one of these from the side. Um, plugged it on into a PCI Express port that you see down there. Uh, it went in really easily. I didn't have to apply much pressure at all. Oh, that's probably partly my motherboard um, letting it in. And then you just basically put the screw back in place where you have it plugged in. It was really easy to, to pop in. And then you can see that the jacks line up on the back panel so that we had seen before outside the computer. So now with the computer turned on, let's get a look at the card while the computer's running. So there's a red LED light from this card. So that, this is the card in the middle here. And you can see the red light emanating from the card. So just be aware that it's going to light your case red. Um, in my particular case, there's a whole lot of other things going on. So it matches the style, you know, of things going on the motherboard. You know, my fans are red and so on. So it's a good color match with what's going on in the system. And now the results. Now I was really impressed with, from the time I turned the computer on with the sound card installed for the first time that sound was already cranking even without installing the drivers for that and it sounded transformed and better. The MP3s that I purchased from Amazon sounded more lifelike, the band sound, the instruments sounded to surround me more. 
Um, and then you're definitely going to want to install the software that it comes with. And now, after I installed the software for the first time, it actually sounded significantly worse than the onboard audio. And it sounded great before I ran the install. And the reason is, you'll have to go to the speakers and headphones menu and tell it that what your speaker setup is. So by default, it defaults to 5.1 surround sound, but I have stereo speakers. And so once I set it back to stereo speakers, it sounded great again. So just be aware of that. And the tools give you a lot of customizations. So um, they give you a little, you can play a THX surround sound test. And you get a lot of choices. So you see how it has a crystallizer and a slider for it. This, this is what makes the voices and instruments really come out more crisp. Surround sound makes it sur sound more surround sound, but has a less effect on stereo speakers. Um, and you can turn on extra bass. Um, I prefer not to. And you have all sorts of other great things like smart sound and Dialog Plus helps dialogue come out more clearly. Um, it gives you a whole lot of other things. You have equalizers so you can pick between different modes. So by default it's flat, but you get a whole pull down of equalizers to pick from. Um, and they give you different sounds. Um, I thought that was really customizable and is nice. Here's something really cool I thought was under Crystal Voice is where the microphone setup is set. Now the microphone, you're going to want to probably crank the volume. By default, it sounds like it couldn't even hear me. So I cranked it all the way up, and then you take, then there's a mic boost setting. So with that, I could hear it much better uh, when I recorded. And this is really cool down here. Here's this thing called focus. Now this has to do with the stereo aspect of the microphone and noise cancellation. It will actually hear you. So over here is my microphone. And remember on the left side there's one microphone and on the right side there's another microphone. And it will actually tell where you are relative to this. So I'm actually sitting slightly offside. I mean I could move this to the middle and it would be fine. But I'm off to the side and even at this narrow angle it doesn't pick up my voice because I'm not sitting right in front of it. Now if I move myself just this much it now picks up my voice. So I think it's really cool that it can differentiate where I am and drop out the audio when I move over here and then pick me up again when I come right to the middle. So if you aren't going to move it to the middle of the monitor like I should, you can go ahead and just slide this bar to give more tolerance, of course. And one other thing is that the power consumed by this card was much less than I expected. It only took 1.4 watts of extra power to have this card installed in the computer. Now when the computer is off or sleep, it made no difference, but according to my kilowatt meter, when the computer is idle, playing music, or playing video, it used 1.4 watts more power. And comparing to high-end video cards that really drain power on your system, and you know, on the order of sometimes 100 watts or hundreds of watts, depending on the video card, I figured this is a high-end sound card and it's probably going to really drain on power, but it definitely did not. You know, my, car, my computer used to idle at 50.2, watts and now it's 51.6 watts is what it idles at. Um, it doesn't actually change your Windows experience score at all by the way having this card on. So I'm really happy with it. I like the, I think this configuration tool is pretty useful uh, but do remember to set it to your mode and play around with the crystal speech um, to boost the microphone to fit your system. Thanks for watching the review.